everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Look Back, where I take a look at games from 1, 5, and 10 years ago, and even 20, this week anyway, uh, and tell you what I think about them now. So let's go back a year ago. Uh, a year ago, I took a look at Disney Sidekicks. Disney Sidekicks, um, a, a game from Eric Lang about being the sidekicks of famous Disney characters, went to mass market, which seems very exciting. Unfortunately, the game was kind of a dud. It's way, 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 way too hard. A lot of fiddly rolls, not great pieces, 5 out of 10. Zapotech uh, from Board and Dice. This is like one of the lighter versions of the, you know, the tea games they do, like, uh, you know, um, Teotihuacan and things like that. This one I did not really enjoy. I felt like the decision tree was too small, 5 out of 10. Dungeon Decorators. This is a tile laying game, which honestly I think would get more points for me if it looked nicer. The idea of being a dungeon decorator doesn't really come through. It's okay, 6 out of 10. Wonder Book. This is a big book that you're opening up with a tree and you're doing some adventures. It's fine. It's an interesting story. Unfortunately, the progression of the story is kind of a one-time thing. It's not particularly long and there's a lot of luck involved, a lot more than I would want. It's, it's neat, but that's about it. Six out of ten. Camel Up Off Season. This is a sequel to Camel Up that you probably haven't heard of and won't hear of because it has really nothing to do with Camel Up. It's just about collecting cards and scoring points and there's like a, an interesting push your luck aspect. It just falls a bit shy. 6.5. Night Parade of 100 Yokai. This is a area control style game with some really cute pieces. This one has aged a little bit better. I, I raised it from a 6 to a 6.5. Origins, First Builders. So take out the fact that aliens are coming down and giving, you know, uh, resources to people to build buildings. That sounds cool. That's barely in this game. But what this game is, is a dice drafting manipulation type game, which I find to be pretty interesting. 7 out of 10. Twinkle, a really simple game, rolling dice and using them to build constellations. I find it interesting. 7 out of 10. Titans, I want to be clear that my rating here is not for 5, which is only in an expansion, or maybe even 4. But with a two or three player game, Titans is kind of a, a dudes on a map style game with these giant Titans that are marching around. That's fun. Seven out of ten. Batoku from Devere, uh, where they kind of turned a corner and did a pretty heavy game. It, the graphics are a bit garish and a lot in your face. I mean, I think it's a beautiful game, but the board is just like vroom. But there is a lot of cool decisions to make in this. It's a deck building game of sorts, uh, but a lot of other things going on. Eight out of ten. Seven Wonders Architects. This is a much simpler version of Seven Wonders, which I thought, who cares, who needs that? I played it, it's amazing. One of the best introductory family games there is, 8.5. And then Vabank, I played the, uh, the, um, the upgraded version of Vabank, and man, oh man, what a fantastic version of, of this game. I love it, I play it with people all the time, 8.5. All right, five years ago, I took a look at Klondike Rush. This is actually from Ryan Lockett. Uh, it's, it's the only game from him that I think I actually dislike. It's kind of a stock market game with a Yeti involved. I just didn't really like it. Five out of ten. London, second edition from Osprey Games. Osprey makes really great stuff. This is just a personal thing. I don't particularly like London. It just has too much of that negative vibe going on. I know a lot of people love it, just not for me. Five out of ten. Medical Frontier, I think I played the follow-up game to this. I'm not sure the redone one. This is about putting out drugs on the market, like legal drugs, pharmaceuticals. Um, some interesting ideas, but ultimately not a fun game. 5.5. By Order of the Queen, eh, this was like an okay, forgettable game. 6 out of 10. Kaiju Crush, this is a monster-style game from Fireside. There's a lot of these out there, so this one's kind of fading out, dropping it from a 6.5 to a 6. Paku Paku, this is a sushi dice stacking game from Antoine Bowser. Again, it's pretty decent, but just falls shy, 6.5. Snippets, this one doesn't look good, it looks like a mass market, but you're trying to make use these little snippets of words to find words. A, a fun party word game, 7 out of 10. Bonk is, was redone, I think, later on as a game called Roll It, but this is kind of like Crossfire, that game where you shot little marbles, except this one you're rolling them down ramps. I enjoy this one a lot. It's actually in the Dice Tower Library, 7 out of 10. 
Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. Man, this game seemed poised to become such a big deal. Everyone was talking about it briefly, and then it faded right off the scene. I think it had one expansion. It's an interesting idea, a cooperative style game, um, but I guess it's just missing that spark. 7 out of 10. I mean, I liked it. Secrets. This is a, a Bruno Fadudi, Eric Lang game um, about who is on what side. Like a very small social deduction game. Some interesting back and forth. 7 out of 10. Stroop. The idea of saying things opposite what they are. If the words are written thin, but the word says thick, you're supposed to say thin. If the word's written in red, but, it's blue, but it says blue, you're supposed to say red. This concept, a lot of people are going to hate it. I enjoyed it. 7 out of 10. Clans of Caledonia, the game in which they managed to fit a very hefty game in a very thin box. Um, I haven't played this one for a while, but it is a very solid game. Strong Euro game. I believe it's, in, it's one of the highest rated games on Board Game Geek. For me, it's an 8 out of 10. 10 Minute Heist, a very quick game about moving up a tower with cards. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this game. 8 out of 10. And Port Royal. Really like this push your luck game. I think five years ago was the first time I played it, but still an 8.5. Absolutely fantastic. Ten years ago, I played Level 7 Escape. Uh, about escaping a facility with aliens. Sounds super cool. This was the first game in this series, and it is by far the worst. There's just so many problems with it. Four out of ten. Sushi Roll. Not a very good dice rolling game. Five out of ten. Slavika. A uh, card game where there's some fighting back and forth. Again, very forgettable. 5 out of 10. Zombie Run for Your Lives. Yeah, there's is one of those zombie games when they were coming out like crazy. Um, and yeah, not very good. 5 out of 10. That's from Wright Games. Search for Gnomes. A memory game with tiles. The, the tiles look kind of cool. It's, it's okay. 6 out of 10. Gauntlet of Fools. This is from Donald X. Vaccarino. It has a lot of similarities to... Um, Going into the dungeon, you know, welcome to the dungeon from yellow, sorry. There's some similarities where you're trying to gear people up and you're like, well, I bet I can go in with fewer things than you can. It's okay. It's, it's like a passing interest game, but didn't go very far. Six out of ten. Crooks, a little game about, well, crooks from White Goblin Games. Again, a lot of these games are very forgettable to me. This is another six out of ten. Sakuro, this is a game about, well, soccer or football, depending on where you live in the world. There's a lot of these games out there. Very few manage to catch, capture soccer very well. And this is another one of those, one that does it okay. Six out of ten. If wishes were fishes, I really like the pieces of this game. It comes with a bunch of bait, these little purple worms that you would stick on a hook and wiggle. And there's a neat concept here if you put worms on cards and you draft the card and you get all the worms on it. It's, it's pretty decent. It's just I don't think the replayability is particularly high, but I like it for what it is. 6.5. Sater, a repo, tenant, opera, rotas, which is an anagram in every direction. It's an old Latin anagram. Uh, anagram. The game itself is you're moving on moving walkways in this library, trying to get these ancient tomes. It's a very unique, interesting game. Uh, so one of my game group was insistent I give it a try 10 years ago, and I'm glad they did. 7.5. Downfall of Pompeii. This game from Mayfair Games where there's a volcano bursting and you're building up the city in the first half and the second half you're running for your lives, not trying to get thrown into the volcano. A little harsh of a theme, but it's done in a silly way and also it happened thousands of years ago. 8 out of 10. And then Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall, a great game. This, uh, one of the first games, again, from Pandasaurus. They just reprinted it uh, last year or two years ago. Great, very much mean area control. Love it. 8.5. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, and I won't be doing this every week because I didn't do many reviews in 2002, but I did a couple reviews. Pig Pile, um, a game, there's a lot of versions of this game, even Richard Garfield did one, but where you're just playing, you're trying to play groups of three cards around. a simple card game, 6 out of 10. And Time's Up, one of the first party games that I was just like amazed at. I gave this a 9.5, and you know what? That rating holds true today. Time's Up is still a fantastic party game. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Look Back here on the Dice Tower.